So a few days ago, I picked up these forging tongs at the De Anza flea market for $5, and I've just kind of fallen in love with looking at the, the, the time and effort that, put in, that went into this. Like, for instance, it probably took somebody a good several hours, at the very least, to make this. And it's always interesting to think, I wonder what they started with. Maybe they started with some rebar, or maybe they melted down their own scrap and made the ingot to... to or the metal stock to turn into this? Who knows? Another question is, since this was obviously hand-forged, when did they make it? You know what I mean? Some evidence might be noticeable in how rusty it is, but to be honest, that could be... That can vary greatly, depending on age. It probably isn't too old, maybe from the 1950s. I don't think it's, it's drastically old, because there are a few blacksmithing shops around here, like, within the Bay Area, I think, so... It probably somebody made it, like, a high school project or something like that. Who knows? But then again, they did a pretty good job. There are a few cracks in this design, though, which is unfortunate. Like, for instance, it looks like, it looks like there's a little crack running down the rivet there. If we open this up, we can see that there's a few more cracks in here. Now, they may be cracks, or they may just be lines left over from forging. I believe there might be... Let's see... Oh yeah, some more like this. Like a little line right there. That may just be where, whenever they were forging it, that just kind of like, it developed a little, like a little fold. It might not be a crack that goes through. It might just be a blemish left over from the production process. The rivet looks pretty, I don't know, it just doesn't look too good, in my opinion. If I were going to do that, I would try to make it flatter, kind of like this side. I'm not an expert at blacksmithing, but I wonder if that crack on there, and maybe even that crack right there, was caused by them pounding it whenever it wasn't hot enough. Like maybe they, maybe they were pounding it for too long and it just put too much stress on it. Who knows? It's obviously made to handle holding something that way and sideways, so you can have like a piece of steel holding it to put it into the fire. Or you can pick up something, like, uh, that way. So that's pretty nice. Ow. It is annoying how it gets stuck like that. No. So, maybe a little bit of, like... Hmm, not really sure. It's a shame that it, it, it wedges itself open. It's really hard to undo it. See, if only they would make this come in a little bit more... And that wouldn't wedge itself into there as much. It would open up further, and it would hit that part more, like more of a 90 degree angle, and probably wouldn't wedge on there as much. So that'd probably be a better thing to do when doing it in the future. That way you don't get it to where it like, sticks together like that. It is interesting how they have war on there. I'm not really sure what, they, what that's for. There could be some initials. I mean, first of all, you think of war as in, like, fighting. You know, like World War II or World War I or whatever. But I don't think that this is really made in any relation to an actual war. It's probably just somebody's name. Like Warren or something like that. Now, it looks like they may have, may have used a stamp for each one. I've never actually seen one, but just, I'm just theorizing that they might have, like, stamps for each one. Like, you take a W put it on there and you, you hit you hit the stamp and it pushes into there and makes the indentation. You hit the A, pound the A in there, and that makes the indentation. You get the R, pound in there, makes the indentation. And it looks like the W stamp that they used indented more on the top than the bottom, because at first I thought it was done by a chisel. But then it occurred to me, if it was done by a chisel, then it would probably be highest density down here, lowest, like, density, or lowest inset depth down here, and it wouldn't be the same, but it looks like it's all the same, so like, like it was one piece. Like, the lines are all slanting in the same direction. So it looks like this was made still by another, like, like stamp type thing, just somebody didn't pound it hard enough. So yeah, I'm, I think it's pretty cool. I'll definitely be using it in my starting out in blacksmithing again. Because the first thing I want to do is make a good hammer. Because 
I could ship my, my hammers out from Illinois, but to be honest, I think I'll, I'll just try to make my own hammer, and I'll make a nice little, like, two or three pound hammer. It'd be kind of cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!